Machina Review. Machina Review. Yo, yeah, man, sup, my purples? Welcome to the black hole. My name is Blessed Beats. Welcome to the here. The day has come. It's time for the final verdict. By now, you've probably seen hundreds and reviews and opinions about this, but I really wanted to take my time with it. I spent a couple of months almost with it, now making lots of beats. Being a fanboy of the machine, I took it upon myself as a responsibility to be as unbiased as possible. So here goes, you know what I'm saying? I spent my time with it now, and I feel confident enough to tell you what is up and what is down. I'm going to be focusing on the machine plus as a standalone device only first let's brush through the hardware the hardware is no disappointment at all whatsoever you know what i'm saying this build is sturdy than a motherfucker we have the the uh, aluminium faceplate here the knobs have improved the jog wheel is still it's still plastic but these are aluminium as well got a nice little aluminium coating on them the build feels a lot better than the Mark III. It feels more luxurious. The knobs don't have this jittery problem that a lot of people have had with the previous versions of the machine, including myself. The first one, Mark I, and the second knob was skipping in the parameters a lot. When I was twisting the knob, it would hop from like two to five and shit. That doesn't happen on this one. So they fine tuned that a lot. They've tuned the pads a little bit too, so the pads are a bit even more sensitive than the earlier ones. And the pads is something that I particularly enjoy about the machine. Ficus Beats, check out his channel and his review on this, made a really good point about the pads. If you would like to really smash the pads, then the MPC is probably more for you. As he expresses it, it's more fun to play the drums on it. With the machine, and this goes for the Mark III as well, you can both smash the pads, but you don't get that bounce recoil you know what i'm saying when, you, when you're really smashing the pads but you can also play them tenderly and it feels great to play so everything feels slightly more fine-tuned than the mark III on this connectionalization and liability there's not much more to add to that uh, i mean you've seen it all the way from the first impression videos dropping but the main public concerns that i picked up on is that there are no there's no cv i don't know if that's just something that people are whining about because they're picking out comparisons between the NPC and this and this is this, this silly war going on if your thing is to control a lot of modular synthesizers uh, with CV output the machine is probably not for you the machine in general is more about having everything in one box I've also seen some people complain about that there's no XLR input on it mm, that's not a very typical thing for a, a standalone box like this to have so if you really need that you would need to get an external preamp of some sorts but one good point about the connectionalization liability on the machine plus is that you're not actually limited to the sound card that's built in here with the two line inputs the two line outputs the microphone in headphones and the midi ins and outs you can actually plug in an external sound card to it and expand on it so the expandability potentially great depending on your situation one concern that i'm having is that the the gain on the mic in is actually pretty low you can crank this up all the way to the top with a balanced dynamic microphone and the input volume is still relatively low that is a minus but something that i particularly enjoy especially since uh, i've been using this with the talk box a lot is the ability to root the headphone output however you wish you have complete freedom with how you root your sound so you can root your sound out the line out or the phone so you can separate them so i might have my drums playing on the line out while i have a synthesizer going out only through the headphone jack which is a really handy little feature for some situations the usb ports support class compliant midi devices so you can plug in some of your favorite devices in there and have the midi hooked up through the USB ports. It's nice. And the word is that support for the complete controls are coming, full support for them too. You can plug them in right now, but it's more like a general MIDI device right now. So uh, you can't use the transport functions and the browsing functions and all of that with the complete control keyboards. But the word is that that's coming up. Let's talk about the workflow in general, okay? The Machine Plus, uh, like any of the other machines, they have my favorite workflow when it comes to laying down an idea and having everything at your fingertips and you don't need to fuck around with anything else. It's my favorite start to finish workflow, up to 95%, because I'd rather track my vocals in a DAW, something like Ableton Live or Logic Pro. Even with the new clips, 
it's just not very nice doing that, you know what I'm saying? It's more cumbersome than just finishing the beat on here. And honestly, I never saw a problem with the way the sequencing worked from the beginning on the Machine Plus when it was only scenes and patterns. I came from 100% sampling. Machine was and is extremely capable. It is my absolute favorite workflow. I've grown with it and so have my expectations. Av McCree in his review made a very good point about uh, the workflow about this, about some of the functions maybe being unnecessarily difficult to get at if you're a beginner. It, it might take one or two button presses and it didn't used to be like this. From the beginning when the first machine came out it was pretty much what you see on the surface here is what you get there was one button for everything but as it grew and developed more functions were added more functionality was added people were requesting stuff uh, it was trying to do more and more things and that's fine I'm loving all the functionality that's been added to it over the years but I didn't really see a problem with it in the first place I've had a decade to get used to it and like I said uh, grow with it so it's more so about having a steeper learning curve than anything. At one point they tried to become Ableton Live by adding the ideas view, which I now have grown to love, but it was a mindfuck for the people who up until then had been using it for the workflow it was intended with only scenes and patterns, which is a wonderful thing, you know what I'm saying? But with that also comes more button presses. It's inevitable. I didn't have a problem at all with making full beats from the beginning. You would just, if you wanted to have something that spans across two scenes, you would just make one pattern on each scene and set the loop to span those two scenes and then just re record over that. In the very beginning, it was a problem because it used to cut off notes if they exceeded one of the, one of the scenes, but they fixed that very early on. Well, now we have it. We have the clips, we have the song view, we have everything. But if this is the first time that you're picking up the machine and you do learn how to use it properly, you will see that there is no other device that matches it in terms of all the functionality that it has in combination with the hands-on ability. You know what I'm saying? Having everything at the touch of your fingertips. And arguably, you can say this about any tool that you pick up a master, but here is the core difference. This much functionality at your fingertips. Steep learning curve, high yielding reward. Being the luxury item that this is, I wouldn't recommend going out and picking up the Machine Plus as your first machine. I'd rather just get the Mark III first and learn how it works and see if that's something for you. And then if you absolutely need it to be a standalone device, get the Machine Plus. Part of the beauty for me about the machine, the, the reason why I moved from MPC to the machine from the very beginning was the hybridness. For me, that was part of what made it great. File management, exporting stems, all of that, that the convenience of having a computer does so much better was a non-issue. And you can't argue with the additional overview that a computer provides. That was the biggest selling point for me when I transitioned into using the machine. People have been requesting a standalone machine forever. Now we have it. Is there a big point to having it? It's a very nice luxury to be able to have it without the computer and sit on my couch over there, sit on my couch out in the living room, in the bed, even on the toilet. As long as the process of getting stationed at the computer is smooth, I just want to be able to plug it in and keep working on my tracks on, on the computer if I so wish. And here's a big issue for me because when I plug it into the computer, it's not a matter of just, oh, the, po the project pops up on the computer. Yeah, everything goes through the SD card. So, so you have to connect it as a SD card reader and move the files over, open it up on the computer, switch over to the controller mode. It's just not a very smooth process, you know what I'm saying? It's never a problem if you made the entire beat on here and you export it straight from the machine onto the SD card and you just flip it over, you know what I'm saying? But it is an issue if you're starting on the computer in the controller mode using some plugins that are not compatible with the machine because there's no way to automatically freeze those tracks. Like on the MPC, for example, you could just freeze the tracks of the plugins that you used and export them to audio tracks and have them load up without an issue. If you start on the beat and stand alone and then move it into to the computer, it's not as much of a big deal. You connect to the SD card and then you load it up on the computer. But it's this toggling process that's a little bit cumbersome. It's not zero friction. Let's say that. Also, one major design flaw that I think they've overlooked forever is that up until Mark II, you could scrub the patterns, navigate them left and right with these two buttons here. Now they have other functions and you have to hold shift and scroll the jog wheel to, 
This requires a very awkward one hand movement or it occupies both of your hands. And when you were editing a pattern before up until the Mark II, it became second nature. It became part of your motor memory, you know what I'm saying, to hop back and forth in the pattern between different parts as you're editing it. That's a UX design flaw that I wished they would have fixed when they were at it, making a new hardware device. The sample editing is still the best experience I've had with any device, software or hardware. It literally feels like you have the sample in your hands and you're manipulating it, juggling with it. It's so fast. I mean, the MPC is not at all far behind, but the, the Machine Plus, it's just right there at the fingertips. I don't think that anything is worse and they've added some functionality to it like automatic chopping and stuff. That's not really my thing. I like more to manipulate the sample. What I see is what I get and what I edit is, is what I edit, if that makes sense. Well, <laughs> sample editing is still in the A plus category for me. Editing sequences. The big public concern here seems to be that no touchscreen is a problem. I don't think no touchscreen is a problem. It's very quick to select notes, sometimes even quicker than on the NPCs because you can't really get at some notes when you're trying to mark them and you need to zoom in and it becomes a hassle sometimes. But it's really a non-issue. We're talking about plus minus one or two seconds here and there. Skip to the next point, browsing. One major issue for me with the browsing in standalone mode is that you can't browse the root of the SD card. You can't browse it by folder. Everything needs to be tagged and according to Native Instruments tagging system, which is a really beautiful thing, you know what I'm saying? It's a great way to browse sounds, beautifully categorized by instrument, by type, by character of the sound. Everything is there, you know what I'm saying? But I want to have the power to browse my own goddamn SD card. Another thing is I would like a regular search like you have on the computer with machine. If I know I want a sound that goes by a certain name, I can just punch it in. To my knowledge, there is no such function on the machine plus in standalone mode. You have to adhere to the tagging system, which is all good when you're browsing presets, but when you're managing your own library, uh, you have to set everything up on a computer in advance, at least for it to be a smooth process. In terms of sound selection, you, you have sounds for days. You're, you'll never run out of sounds. You got access to all the machine expansions and a great selection of complete plugins. Pair that up with sampling, you really do have everything that you need. But there is one issue, and that's when it comes to the sound design of it. There is no intuitive GUI for the plugins like Massive, for example. I want to reach the global tuning, which is a very basic thing. And I don't have access to that parameter there. And it's just a long list of parameters. The whole framework that the machine is, is uh, structured in would mean that they would need to pretty much code it from the ground up in order to make a GUI like that. So that's something that we're not going to see probably. So don't buy it hoping that that's going to come out, but they can definitely rearrange the structure of it and make it a, make it a little bit more intuitive because designing sounds from scratch using any of the plugins is just not very enjoyable right now performance wise i'm not disappointed you know what i'm saying i can run some pretty heavy plugins and a few of them you can check my video out when i'm when i'm pushing the cpu to the limit there's some different opinions regarding that but i'm i'm pretty damn impressed with how much it can handle does get a little bit hot sometimes in, in this area when you're pushing the CPU hard to the limit, but still not as much as I thought it would, being that there's no real ventilation really on here. But considering the processing power it takes from some of these plugins, it did exceed my expectations on performance. Here's one big concern I have about the Machine Plus, and that is that it doesn't have any in internal memory apart from the RAM. Almost everything is based off the SD card, and SD cards are not the safest medium out there, so I'm a little bit uh, paranoid about it, to be honest. I had a lot of crashing issues in the beginning. It was still in beta back then, but it was regarding to SD card issues, so I had to format the SD card, the SD card that was included, mind you, and uh, reinstall everything. And installing everything, it takes a long time. Installing one expansion that's like uh, one gigabyte, it takes like 15 minutes at least. 
I'm just uh, shooting from the hip here, but it takes a long time. So if you're gonna install everything that's compatible with the Machine Plus, you better carve out the better part of your day and you know find some other pastime activities to do in the meanwhile. So I'm a little bit concerned about the stability of ha having everything based off the SD card. Backups are gonna be your friend here, but I'm not sure you can just clone an SD card and then put it in again without having to reinstall stuff on it. There's probably a way to do that, but um, yeah, minor concern I have. Another concern, it's not streaming directly off the SD card like a SP404SX or Octatrack or something like that. Since the internal memory is pretty large, you can load up a bunch of beats on here or a bunch of stems uh, without having any problems with it. So I don't see that as an issue. That's a non-issue too. Bugs. There's still some baby disease issue maloos going on with the machine. Like I'll have projects just crash on me out of nowhere and it's not really a performance issue it's just a random crash out of nowhere and the project disappears good thing to know if that happens you're not going to see your saved project under the file menu anymore of, of the recent files but your project is probably still in there if you go through the browser and go to projects and check your user projects but this is the type of thing that causes trust issues with me and trust is the cornerstone of any healthy relationships you know what i'm saying i don't fully trust the machine plus those bugs need to be fixed now there's also still some weird buffer distortion thing happening randomly either if you're overcharging the cpu like a motherfucker or when you're first loading up a project and uh like the first second when you first play a beat that you just loaded you get this little <sighs> crackle thing and that can happen in a live situation i wouldn't trust to bring this in a live situation bringing us to the next point the actual standalone ability and portability of the machine plus one public concern is that there's no battery built-in battery yeah we went over that already if you want to add a portable battery to it that's not a big issue this is not the main issue for me about the portability for one thing it's it's the price it's such a luxury item that i don't feel comfortable bringing this just anywhere another point is it's not ultra portable portable it's a really good build which is a good thing but that also means it's heavy and sharp so it's not like the op1 something that you would just bring and doodle on anywhere you go i would bring this on an airplane on a train on a bus which I wouldn't do before with a Mark III because there's nowhere you can place a laptop. But between the bugs, the price, and the weight, I would hesitate to bring this live because I have this feeling I have to be careful around it. In your home, on a lengthy trip, on the Airbnb, on a hotel room, it's perfect. It's got everything that you would wish for in a standalone machine. The price definitely makes it a luxury item. And I think it lives up to that for the most part. I mean, Fucking people are willing to shell out like 50 grand for a Moog synthesizer or something like that. And I think if you're looking for a standalone device in this category, then you're already up there sniffing in the price ranges. And I'm saying that these couple hundred bucks extra that you're paying for it, for me, it would definitely be worth it. But I'm not that die hard on it has to be a standalone device. If I'm at the computer, I'm at the computer anyways. And that gives me much more flexibility. I just got a powerful PC right here. I can use the entire range of the complete library, which is brilliant. I really enjoy having the option to work on beats standalone, but it's not a big deal to me. And I'm saying like some people who are really some obsessive over the fact that it has to run on its own, which might be essential to the way that you work. And I hooked me up with this. If they didn't, and I was looking for one standalone device that does everything that the machine does, I would have bought it anyways. I, w I would have bought it. But they really do need to fix these minor issues that makes it uncomfortable. Patch those trust issues up, you know what I'm saying? So who is it really for? It's for the seasoned machine users who know how to work the machine, who realize the great potential in it, not only the potential, but the current state where it's at, how amazing the workflow of it is. The people who want the most flexible sampler that there is. The people that want the greatest selection of preset sounds that you can uh, use as a starting point and modify. The people who want as much as possible in one box. That desperately want to get away from the computer, but keep as much functionality and possibilities as possible open in one box. The people who can afford it, 
and that's it. If you're just starting out making beats, for example, and you just want to mess around with some samples, put some samples together, no fucking way you're gonna get this. If you're peeking at the machine like, hmm, that might be something for me, get the Mark III first and try it out, learn it, and if you absolutely love it, like I do, is worth getting the Machine Plus. I hope I added something valuable to the discourse. Despite all the, the trash that I've thrown at it, I had a pretty negative approach, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm pointing out all the bad stuff, but I do really love this machine. And uh, despite all the nitpicking, it's still the best beat making machine that I've tried. So check them out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The video right here. Maybe join us in the black hole, the Discord community for the weekly beat challenges. You know what I'm saying? Check out my website for some free sample packs. And okay, bye bye.